All righty, well, God bless you. I'm going to go ahead and give you a few more minutes so that those who's coming on, they can, you know, join us. So hopefully that you had a nice and powerful weekend. I know that we, and you know, we had a powerful service yesterday, so we're just enjoying the presence of the Lord and all that he's saying and all that he's doing. All right. So do want to say thank you to and all those of you, you know, you're so into our lives uh, for the past appreciation. So First Lady and I, we do also appreciate you as well. So just stalling for a little bit more time to see who's going to come on. Last week I wasn't able to come on or didn't come on. So I do apologize for that. So I'm trying to, you know, get back being consistent again and find the best time to do these here at Facebook Live. So I do appreciate you wanting to listen, wanting to join me and, you know, just thank God for you as well. So I'm going to go ahead and get started because you know time fly when you're having fun. So let's just pray. Father, we thank you right now. We give you glory and honor, Lord. I just thank you for each and every person that you have tuning in to this word, Lord God. I just thank you for accuracy. I thank you for your anointing. I just thank you, Lord God, that you're answering prayers. I just thank you that this word encouraged them, give them insight and revelation. And we thank you for all that you're doing. You're a good God. You're an awesome Father. We thank you for all, your, all, all the things that you're doing, God. Thank you for healing. Thank you for breakthrough. Thank you for being you in our lives. We appreciate your love, Lord, and we love you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. All right, God bless you. <laughs> I got to get into this here. First lady already kind of prophesied to me. She asked me, you know, what the title of this here going to be because she usually put the title up for me. And I told her it's going to be breaches versus breakthrough. And so she said that's going to be part one. This is called part one. So I'm, hope, I'm hoping that I can get through everything. So it will only be part one, only one part. But we'll see. You, we'll see. If you was betting, you'll probably say First Lady is right. And so I think the odds are on her in her favor. So let's look at Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 1. You know where I'm going. You should know anyway. It says, I will stand my watch and set myself on the right part and watch to see what he'll say to me and what I will answer when I am corrected. Then verse 2 said, Then the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision, make it plain on the tablets, that he may run who reads it for the vision, yet for the appointed time. But the end it will speak would not light, though it tarries, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Again, we know that saying, Jesus, he's on his way. Got to keep reminding you of this here because when you look in the Bible, it looks like the, the apostle of old, you know, they look like they was teaching the people to like Jesus is going to come the next day. He's going to be coming the next week. And so we, we kind of get away from having that type of mindset that Jesus can come any day now. The rapture of the church can happen. So you don't want to be, you know, I'm telling you, you don't want to be lukewarm or cold. You want to be hot and stay fired up for the Lord Jesus and then it says, verse 4, Behold the proud, his soul is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. The just shall live by his faith. The just shall live by his faith. Now, I've been, we've been talking about, you know, breakthroughs, breakthroughs, breakthroughs. And I keep pushing this thing because I believe God wants to do some breakthroughs for you and through you. And so I titled this here about, you know, breakthroughs versus, you know, breaches. So I want to give you some definitions so that you can see where we're coming from, because this is important. It's very important. So I've been talking about breakthrough, but I really never defined the definition of a breakthrough. Give you, give you a definition of a breakthrough so that you can probably use it or you can you know, build from it. So I've been telling you about the 12 keys that God gave me for a breakthrough, right? And I won't have the time to go through telling you about the keys because, again, I'll be doing part two, three, four, and five. But one of the first key that I gave you was key number one, I must be fully persuaded. So you must be fully persuaded the anointing upon your life has more power than it takes to destroy the, all the oppositions, obstruction, obstacles, and oppression. And so most of us, we begin to look for a breakthrough but we should be looking for the breaches first. 
And I'm going to explain what that means because we often look for a for a for a breakthrough from God. But I want you to see, I want you to see that God uses your breaches to bring you through a with a breakthrough. So so what do you so what do, what am I saying? All right, look. Everybody yell and ask God, you know, God, I'm asking you for a breakthrough, right? So I'm asking you for a breakthrough in my healing. But we never look at the breach of why we were sick. You know, some people want a breakthrough of, of financial prosperity, but they never look at the breaches of why they have lost all their money. So the key to it that I want you to realize that God give us a word that he tell us that through your, through your breaches, I'm going to cause you to pass right through those, those breaches and I'm going to give you the success that you need. But we got to begin to understand, first of all, our mistake. How was the enemy so successful against us? You know, again, maybe we haven't been taking care of ourselves, and now we're looking for a breakthrough and our healing. But we never want to go backtrack and look at where the mistake occurred or how did the adversary have success in our life. So God been showing me that said, oh, look, look, Chris, go back first, teach the people, look. They need to start looking at where the door was open to that adversary because that same door, God's going to bring us right through, you know, with victory. But this is something that, hey, you don't want to go back to. Now, remember I told you when First Lady and I, you know, we dealt with that, that, you know, stage four lung cancer. We first realized, okay, when we did our research, we found out that, you know, through this holistic doctor, she said that, you know, cancer starts in a fungus. And sure enough, my wife was first, you know, having trouble. She went and she had a biopsy and they couldn't get anything out of her because it wasn't a, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't actually, um, it was actually in the state of a fungus. So when they tried to, uh, you know, biopsy it, they couldn't pull anything out. So things, you know, we find out later that, you know, we find out, we find this, in other words, this information later. Who knows what she sniffs, smell, I'm talking about, you know, mildew or something, or how this thing actually originated, but we had to do our homework and research, and this is what we found out. So God began to take us through a whole lifestyle change. See, we want our healing, but we need to first understand where the breaches was at, because if you don't close that door, I'm telling you, the devil going to take you right back through it. And there's a powerful principle in naming one nine. It said affliction would not come back a second time. Why? Because I know that God, he would teach us first how to warfare. He would teach us what we need to know so this adversary can't have any more breaches in our life. But most of us, we say breakthrough, breakthrough, but we need to start looking at God. Where's first the breaches? Where's the breach? At? Where was the breakdown? Where is the, is the place where the adversary was able, able to have success? How did I get sick in the first place? You know, it wasn't God. How did, you know, how to, you know, why is it that I'm, I'm still broke? And I told you there were some things that God is showing me that we are coming against the power, the power of the adversary who's been trying to hinder us. So I want you to, I just I may just have to introduce this here to you, but I'm telling you, you're going to, you're going to start seeing some things that you're going to say, okay, God, uh, okay, I, I see what you're talking about now. Let's find, let's look at Micah chapter two verse. Let's just look at Micah chapter two verse 12. These are some of my favorite verses. You know, you may hear me read it often because when we talk about breakthrough is, yeah, it says that our God, he's the God of a breakthrough. And so, he, but I want you, I want you to see this here. I want you to see this here because again, that, you know, we keep yelling breakthrough, breakthrough. God keep yelling, find the breach. First, look at the breach because the breach is the opening where the adversary, we gave the adversary and I'm going to show you why. And then we find out that's the same door that God's going to bring us through to our victory. Yeah. So it says here, Micah chapter 2, verse 12, it says, my God, I'm getting a little bit excited here. It says, I will surely assemble all of you, O Jacob, and I will gather the remnant of Israel. I'll put them together like a sheep of the fold, like a flock in the midst of their pasture. They shall make a loud noise because of so many people. So you see what God's doing here. And verse 13 said, the one who breaks open will come up before them. They will break out and pass through the gate. So the gate in which they was captive, they're going to come right through that gate. And it says here, and go out by it, and their key will pass before them with the Lord of their head. 
That's so important because most often, thank you, Lord, most often we don't look for the door that brought us into the captivity or the door that was open for the enemy to bring havoc on our marriage, to bring, you know, sickness against our body. We don't look for that door. We don't look for what door was opening that the adversary was able to come in and use it against us. And so now it's time for us to be wise. Now we got to start looking and see what doors are open where the adversary been having access and being able to have success against us. So we don't look for our mistakes. We just ask God to bless me, bless me. And I love what, you know, for, you know what, what my wife said. And she said she wouldn't have never made any changes in her life if God would have just blessed her with the miracle of, he of healing. So, but this caused us to change our whole lifestyle, hers and mine and those who are around us that will listen to us. But I want you to realize that, that I think many people missing God because he first wanted us to make sure we understand what actually happened. I mean, you don't have to be in a rush for your healing. You'll get your healing, but you want to walk with God and find out, God, where, where, why is this adversary was, was successful? You know, don't, don't question God. He didn't bring it. And I'm going to show you this here. It was something that we fail. It's something that we overlook. But the premise of this word here is that when we start looking at the breaches, God going to bring us right through those openings that the adversary had, you know, had success. But I want you to see this, but it says that he's called the Lord of the breakthrough and he's going to bring you through every breakthrough. But I think the first of all, ask him, why, you know, ask him, show, show you why the officer had the access in the first place. Now, are you ready to get into some of this here? Uh, because we, we, you, you need to know, you got to know. <laughs> see, if we don't understand how this happened, we're going to repeat it again. That means the adversary can still win. In, in military war, they want to, you know, you, you make sure that the adversary don't have access any longer. You know, you make sure that he's taken out or, the, or what he's been trying to do, he can't repeat it. You know, think about Japan when they bombed, you know, you know, you know, Hawaii. America's made sure that won't ever happen again. So, and then that's, that's the same principle to God. God wants to make sure that you, you know that, that the adversary, you have so much revelation and you get these doors closed that the adversary would never be able to do it again. So now, let's look at some things here. So the word breach, it's interesting the word breach and breakthrough. I'm going to be defining both of them, okay? The word breach, just looking it up online, it said it's an act of breaking or failing to observe a law, agreement, or code of conduct. A breach in confidence, it says. So in other words, it says a, br a breach can be defined as a violation, a breaking, a transgression, a neglect, a failure to observe, or also mean noncompliance. Now, you know, when we, we, we lived at this one place, I'm telling you, you know, we had, a, we, we had a house, one acre gated, you know, community. But I tell you, when we moved out there, these these people who were selected on the board, they just love attacking. Yeah, yeah, they did. They love attacking my wife and I. And they will always send us letters, you're non-compliance, non-compliant. I mean, you can have a, you know, one blade of grass touching the fence. Oh, you're non-compliance. <laughs> we found out later that our our record with this association was so thick, <laughs> you know, it was the it was the largest, it was their largest, you know case, okay? And what I want you to see is that they kept calling us non-compliance. We was a compliance, but they kept on telling us that we're breaking the rules and the laws. So when you're talking about a breach, it's talking about a non-compliance. And so this is why I'm going, going talking to you because God wants us to start looking at our non-compliance to his words, our non-compliance or our violation to, you know, the word of God. A violation, you know, our transgression against his his principles of his word. So we don't look at that first. We look at, hey, I'm being attacked. God, what's up? I'm giving money. God, what's up? But I don't have any. So we start looking at we look we start looking at God in the sense, God, what's wrong? What's wrong with your word? What's wrong with this? And we don't look at where the breach, where is the violation, the non-compliance? Because you could be just you're not praying like you're supposed to be. 
but yet you're still yelling and screaming that prayer or healing don't work. So I want you to first start zeroing in. Or really not me, but I really be God. I believe God wants you to first start zeroing in where the breach is at. Because I believe he's going to show us where the breach is at. And I tell you, this, so, this is so important. Because I think then that you're going to start seeing breakthroughs all over the place. Because when I find a hole, a breach, I want to I want to plug that thing quickly. Now, my water bill started going up. Every month it started going up. So, you know, I can I start taking less showers, you know, I'm smelling to save some money. No, I'm just kidding. But I'm just kidding now. I still took the same amount of showers, okay? But I want you to see the water bill was going up. Then I started saying, okay, something not something not right here. I found out there was a there was a leak, a breach that's costing me some money. So what do I have to do? I gotta find it. Now look, I could try to, you know, take less showers and try to make up the money, but that's not effective, right? I could tell first lady, no, one shower a week, you know, because we gotta save up some money because our water bill going up. Or I can say, look, let me find where the leak is at because something is wrong. We never look to see, you know, in our lives what's wrong and causing us to be sick causing us to, to be depressed, causing us to, you know, lose our money. So, so this is where God told me to start telling you, don't be so much focused right now on the breakthrough. Start focusing. Let's find the breaches. Let God show us where the leaks are at. Why are we losing our money? Why is it that we can't keep anything? Why is our relationship going sour or bad? We got to start looking at where's the breach because through that breach, this is where we find that adversary is working. Now I got to get you into some more word because let, let me just give you some quotes, okay? Job chapter one, verse 10, it says that Satan said, you know, Satan wanted Job and Satan said, God, you got a hedge about this man. I can't get to him because you're protecting him. So that hedge was a wall. There was a barrier that Satan knew he couldn't touch Job. Job was blessed. Job walking with God. Okay, but but God began to re let the devil know the hedge was broken. Job was actually violating some 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 scriptures, you know, some in the word. It talks about Job says in in, in, in chapter three verse twenty five. He said, "The things that I greatly fear has come upon me." God, you know, God doesn't want us walking in fear. So what I want you to see that I know we look squeaky clean, but we're not perfect. But most often we're overlooking the very area that the breach is coming. Look, all it takes is a crack and all that water I was losing. So I know sometimes we don't think all oh, that crack ain't going to hurt us or a little compromise here is not going to allow the adversary to, to affect us. No, it does affect you and it will affect me. So let me give you again the, the, the next definition of of a breach. So it says, so again, it's an act of breaking or failing to observe a law. So you and I are still responsible of following it. I love what, you know, this, the one thing they say about our law, if you go into court, they say ignorance of the law is no excuse. So if you don't know the law, you can't plead, well, God, I, you know, you can't plead to the judge. I didn't know the law, so I'm excused. No, you're supposed to know it. And if you if you didn't, you still violate it. Since you still violate, you still can be fined, go to jail, or wherever the case may be. Same thing's true principle from the word. If you don't know this Bible, the devil's gonna have a field day with you. He's gonna he's gonna be able to have success against you. But when you know the word and you know your rights, then you can put it into it. And so that's why I say this non-compliance, non-conforming, and where the breaches are at. It's time to get serious, church. That's why I don't miss service. I, I'm, I, you know, I do. That's been my habit. That's been me. That I, there may be a word that God is going to say something to me. I was like that when I was, you know, as a minister of the gospel. I was like that. I came. I came to church. I came to church. You know, so I'm trying to get you to see something here. We have this attitude that we think, okay, I can be in non-compliance today, not coming to church, not coming whatever that God told you to do. That's a breach. That's, I'm telling you, I don't care how you say it, how you look at it. I'm just to give you the definition. And if you want to understand why the enemy been having such a, you know, an impact against you, because there's breaches. So like I said in Job, Job, I mean, he was protected, but there, the, but the hedge around him 
Satan was able to get through. And that's what I want to sh share with you also about that. So then uh, the word breach also, it can mean a gap in a wall. See, just a gap, a barrier or a defense, especially one made by an attacking army. So a breach in the mountain wall. So it talks about, it, you know, it can be a break. It can be a split. It can be a crack. You know, it can be a rent. It can be an opening. It can be a hole. It can be a cleft. But I want you to see what this word means because you know, the word breach, because it's a gap in a wall, a gap in a wall, a gap in a wall. So now remember Ezekiel, I believe, 22 verse 30. God said, you know, you know, he, 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 he sought for you know, he sought the little man for a man who will stand what in the gap, who will repair the breaches in the wall, but he couldn't find any. That's 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 a good one to read. Because why? That really shows it wasn't God, it was it was the people seeing non-compliance to God's law had breaches where the enemy can have access. See, most often people keep thinking it's God putting sickness on people. It's not God putting sickness on people. God trying to get us to get the breaches, the cracks that the adversary is going through closed. He gets all the blame, mostly God. And it's not God at all. We're the one who allowed the crack or the breach to occur where the enemy has a gap to attack. Remember, I'm getting ahead of myself. Remember, the Bible says that Satan, he's like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. What is he looking for? A breach. He's looking for a non-compliance in our life. He's looking for a violation of God's word. And then when he can see that and we're talking like that and living like that, he's, he's, setting, he's setting that person up. He's setting that person up. So now, let me hurry up. Wow, time flying, huh? So now the word breach, the verb means make a gap in and break through a wall, a barrier, a defense. So this is interesting because it, all it takes, you know, like a dam, all it takes is a crack and water is going to be leaking. And, and everybody know that crack is going to eventually cause a, 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 a total devastation where all that water that was being contained that crack is going to cause all that water to be, you know, just overflow. And that's how you got to start looking at some things, too. You don't want breaches, okay? Just like my water sprinkler system out there is costing me money. Now, I think, um, you know, I talked to my landscaper. He said, he'll pay, you know, $70, he'll fix it. Eh, well, the part alone is only 20 bucks, okay? 20 bucks. Now, this 20 if I would have caught that breach a long time ago, my water bill has gone up more than $20, okay? More than $20. So I want you to see, breaches can cost you. Breaches can cost you a whole lot of money. Breaches, you know, that you're not looking, paying attention to or you're allowed to occur, guess what? It can happen. Now, some of you may say, well, you know, it is not your fault that the sprinkler system is, um, you know, you know, it's leaking. Well, it is my fault because it's my responsibility. See, we keep wanting to throw everything on God. It's my responsibility to maintain that, to make sure everything is working, or I should have put it on the guy that I hired to make sure that he noticed it. In fact, I think he noticed it. He just didn't care. Okay. But anyway, that's another story. All right. So now let's look at this here. So so this so this word, this breach word, the the breach, the verb of it, it means to break, to burst, to rupture. Okay. It also means force itself through, split, and bust. So I want you to begin to see then this word breach is vitally important. So now when we compare the word breach with the word breakthrough, I've already given you a hint. So when the enemy comes through and well, there's a breach and an access that we give him. Now, so let me, okay, let me make it clear. All right, let's say, because I, I want to make sure you, you, you're getting this, and I think, I know you should be able to get it. Look, if you, hmm, there's a lot of disease out there, you fool around, you can get it. That's called sin. But what happened? Because of that sin, the transgression of God's word, something can get a hold of you. So I want you to, I want you to see this here. So it's not God. 
<laughs> you, if you give the enemy uh, access to you, he's going to take it because you've given him a crack to get through. He, you're giving him a, you know, you, you, you actually destroying your own hedge that God has got around you. So I want you to see that the importance of this here because people want answers. These are some of the reasons why the enemy was able to do some of the stuff he did. And it wasn't by God's permission. It was by our non-compliance. That's where that breach is something else because it talk about it's a breach in your contract. See, God doesn't break covenant with us, but we can. You know, we can. We can sin against God. So he'll forgive us. So I want you to see the, the, the importance of this here because my God, if you want to keep under the blood and say, say protected, he knows we make mistakes. But as soon as you recognize that mistake, forget it right. Get it right. Find that breach. Get that thing repaired. That's what I got to do today. I'm, I'm going to be repairing because <laughs> I don't like my bills going up. Okay. So that's my motivation. I don't like my bills going up. All right. So now, and I know my, I know my wife, she's not going to you know slow down on her showers. Okay. Down to once a week. No. Okay, so I gotta get the guy gotta get the breach, the leak, the crack fixed. Now I want to go to Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 8. Yeah, I'm gonna just do the breach part, then I'm gonna get you to the um breakthrough definition. Now it says here, I want you to see the importance of it. My God, I'm praying that this is gonna fire you up and you you're gonna quit being slow about fixing problems. See, look, even in marriage, if you're, not, if you're not careful, the breach can occur. Look, in a marriage, I always taught three things that are vitally important in a marriage. The top three things, I believe, in a marriage. Communication, money, sex. Or communication, sex, and money. Okay? And the most important out of the three is communication. So you... So now when you start seeing things occurring in your relationship, well, you're not really talking anymore. Something, there's a breach going on. Something is not right. You should be able to see, just like I was able to see my water bill going up, You there's, there's signs for you to understand. There's a breach going on in the relationship. Maybe somebody offended. Maybe somebody got hurt. Maybe somebody got a problem that they don't want to admit to their spouse. What I want you to begin to see. See, we start seeing signs, but we ignore them. We start, you know, okay, it ain't nothing. You know, it's going to be all right. That, that, that leak I got outside, it's not fixing itself, okay? It's actually getting worse because the more the water keep leaking, I'm looking at my water bill, but it's overwatering some areas in my yard that now the landscaping dying. Now that's more money. So, it's more easier to deal with the breach and you got to fix it where the problem is at. And that's why I keep hearing God say, if we will, I mean, we will settle down in a sense and get really serious. God, where is the breach at? How did my wife go get cancer? Not, be, not God put it on her. Where was the opening of the door. We have learned so much that we want to teach you about because stress is an answer. Stress is an avenue that it says that nearly, I think I think I read something about like 90, 95% of diseases comes through. Yeah, when you under stress, your immune system, what I was, ta was taught, it, it lowers your immune system. Interesting, interesting. So, and God tell us, hey, he don't want us to be distressed. He said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, you believe also in, in me, Jesus said. Then we find that the fear came in from the coronavirus. I wouldn't be surprised that many of the people that did stress their immune system out. So, but I'm saying, look and see where 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 the, the breach is at. Find the breach. Now, let me read this here because I want to, mm, ah, I'm going to have to come back to it, all right? Now, watch. Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 8, powerful verses. It says here, he who digs a pit will fall into it. Interesting. And he said, and whoever breaks through a wall will be bitten by a serpent. You, 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 see, you see what God says here. Wow. Let me read it for you again. He who digs a pit will fall into it. So the mischief, 
the things that we're doing, it, it can also backfire on us too. Okay? So you, oh, I don't want to read my Bible. That can backfire on you. Oh, I don't want to go to church. Those things that we're doing, it can backfire on us. There, there's this principle I taught, cause and effect. There are some things in which you're doing and I'm doing that's causing this cause is going to cause, <laughs> cause and effect. It's going, you're going to see the effect later if you don't see it right away. So this person here, the one who dig the pit, is going to fall into it. And he said, and whoever breaks through a wall will be bitten by a serpent. So when we find hedges, walls, where there's been a breach, the Bible says the serpent is ready to bite. If the, if the wall is broken, the serpent is going to bite. You hear me? And it says, let me read it for you again. Chris ain't making this up. It says here, again, he who digs a, who digs a pit will fall into the pit. And whoever breaks through a wall will be bitten, not might, will be bitten by a serpent. So if you remove the hedge or if you allow that, that wall of protection to be broken, the Bible said the snake is going to bite. Satan will attack. So it's important then. Let's find where the breaches is at. Let's find where the walls of protection have been broken. Now, I know we always try to say, and no weapon formed against me shall prosper. That's so true. But you can't be in non-compliance to the other scripture that said, if we sin, that's a door open, okay? If we, if, if again, if I take the hammer and hit my finger, I can't say that was Satan, okay? That pain coming from, because we doing it to myself, okay? So I, so I want you to see that most often we get spooky. We start saying, it's the devil, it's the devil. It may be him, but it's us too. That allow the adversary to have access because there's a breach. There's a breach. There's a breach. Now, wow, time has already flew by, huh? So, first lady, she's right again with her prophetic self. You know, you know, with her prophecy, prophetic. All right. So, but I want you. I want you to see then. I want you to. We're going to deal with this here. It's time for us to stop allowing the enemy. Okay, because he began to, he, he's trying to hold us, hinder us, okay, and harass us. Now, I'm going to show you how to stop all of this here from the word if you don't know already. But I'm praying right now that you and I would stop and say, okay, God, I hear you. You bring in breakthrough. And I think this is something, this is, could be, here's a word for somebody. This is why you may not be seeing, seeing healing because you're too lazy to find where the breaches is at. See, I'm, I'm, I just got to be straightforward with you because we, we keep thinking something wrong with God and his word and the system. This, God's word is and the system is perfect. The Bible says the word of the Lord is perfect. Okay, it's perfect. It's been tested and already proven. But I want you to see, we keep, we, the, the, sometime you got to, you got, I'm telling you, you got to go into a prayer. You got to go into a fast and you got to say, God, where is the door is open? Where is this, where is the door open and most often, it's the door that we open to the adversary. Now, when you find that you didn't open up the door, I mean, you can take your big fat foot and kick Satan right out of your house, right out of your home, okay? Because you never, you never gave him any access. But he will try you. He will try. He will bluff you. But this is what I want you to see. We're going to get into more about this here. Your breakthrough come through now in Jesus' name. But I believe you have an honest conversation with God. Okay, God. What, 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 what's going on here? I don't know if, if it's a gene, if something is if, if something that you wasn't paying attention to, that God was telling you, to don't go to this, this place. You know, there, I believe there's some people that God spoke to, don't go to this store. And they went anyway and they got the virus. I told you, don't be afraid of this virus. What you should be doing, letting the Holy Spirit lead you and guide you. If he tell you to wear the mask, wear the mask. If he tell you, don't go, don't go. I'm serious. If God tell you don't go to church, don't go to church. But I don't see often he will ever tell you to do that, okay? Okay? Uh, he won't tell me, and I'm scheduled to preach, okay? But I want you to know if I'm scheduled to be there, I, I know you're scheduled to be there too. So quit arguing with me, all right? I'm going to stop here. I pray this has been good for you, and I just pray that this will get, begin to get you to start being discerning, okay? Because I believe that once you really look at this here, I think that's where... I, you, you, I believe your Jesus moment comes in 
where you say, God, wow, thank you for showing me. I'm the one who opened this door and I have the right, okay, to get it. And I'm calling upon your grace and your mercy to get it fixed. I believe the door that we open up is the same very door God's going to have us coming out with victory. And that's what I really believe he's given me to show you. Hey, if, you, if the door is open to sickness and disease, I believe God's going to take you right back through that door of, of victory. But you got us, but you do want to catch and say, okay, God, oh, wow, I was eating this stuff and that's what caused me to have all the problems, all the inflammation and stuff. And my body kept telling me not to eat it, but I kept doing it anyway because I like the way it tastes or whatever the case may be. I really believe God's going to share, share some things with you because I believe he's given us all breakthrough. And, it's, and how, you, how did you lose your money? Because you was, you're, you're, you're too greedy. You know what I mean by that? You're ready to do, you, you're ready to compromise. You're ready to go, you're ready to go after these quick, quick, these quick gimmicks that cost you to lose your money. No, no. The Bible says he that gather by little, you know, increases much. So there are some principles that we've been violating. And if we quit violating the word, we're going to have success. But I really believe God wants to bring in the correction to our lives first. And then we're going to see manifestation of breakthrough. So I got to stop. I love to keep going. I pray this help you because if you don't stop and really, lit, and lit, really hear this here, you're going to let this thing go on and go on and go on. And man, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm in intercession for some, some, for some people. Whew, I don't want to say anything because I don't want nobody to think I'm targeting, but I'm truly, in, I'm truly interceding because, wow, the light got to come on. We, we got, we've been so deceived that we're the one who allow the wall to be broken. And the Bible says, if the wall is broken, the serpent will bite. I don't want him to bite you. I don't want him because this is poison. He's trying to hurt you and kill you. And I'm trying to, I want you to see, but every wall, every, every, everything that the adversary have been trying to do, I really believe God's going to bring you right through of your poverty into riches, from sickness to health, from depression to joy. But it's just that time now. And I'd be out of time. Love you. I pray this is blessing you and helping you out. And just start having your moments with Jesus. Okay, God, just show me where did this come from? Where did this leak? Where did this leak come from? What, what, you know, where, where, where did this at? And I tell you, once you see it, I, mean, I tell you, your breakthrough usually comes quickly and immediately. Because all you got to do now, let, listen to what he has to say. You'll be back up on your feet. You'll, you'll see your money come back again. You'll see your restoration occurs quickly. All right, got to go. Really got to go. Love you. God bless you.